retirement, you need to purchase an annuity. And you have two choices, either a living annuity or a guaranteed annuity, or you can have a bit of both. Each of these options has its own set of advantages and limitations, so we're dedicating a video to each of them. Up first, we're talking about a living annuity. With a living annuity, it's much like investing in an investment portfolio. Your capital is used to buy different types of assets, suitable assets with an appropriate risk profile, right? The aim is for your capital to grow by earning a return in the market, but you also can't put the money in something that exposes you to too much risk. This is your retirement money. If you lose it, that's it, it's gone. So the older you are, the more likely you'll have the money in a slightly more conservative portfolio. But your financial advisor can guide you on this. In addition to investing the money, you need to pay yourself a salary from that investment portfolio. You need some form of income to cover your expenses in retirement. So you invest that capital lump sum and then specify a certain percentage of that to be paid out to you each month. Let's look at an example. You have 3 million Rand. If your expenses each month amount to 12,500 Rand, that means you need to withdraw 5% from your living annuity each year. How did I work that out? 12,500 Rand times 12 to get the annual amount equals 150,000 Rand. 150,000 Rand is 5% of 3 million Rand. The full 150,000 Rand can be paid out annually in advance, quarterly, or you could choose to receive 12,500 Rand monthly. This 5% is known as your drawdown percentage. It's the percentage that you're withdrawing or drawing down from your living annuity. This drawdown percentage is set when you buy the living annuity and you can review it every year. Legally, you are forced to withdraw money from your living annuity between 2.5% and 17.5% of your investment. Even if you don't actually need to withdraw any money, well, lucky you, you'll be forced to withdraw a minimum of 2.5%. In our example, that amounts to just over 6,000 Rand per month. Or if you're thinking, I'll need way more than that, the max you can withdraw is 17.5%, which is just over 43,000 Rand per month in our example year. But, 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 a very important but, you need to think carefully about how much you withdraw because the money left over needs to last you for the rest of your life. The more you withdraw, the bigger the risk of that money running out in your lifetime. Remember that the balance of your investment, what you've not yet withdrawn, has been invested in different assets. That money needs to grow. So you need to do a lot of balancing with a living annuity. Find the right balance between how much you withdraw monthly and how much you leave to invest and earn a return for you. Drawing too high an income at the start of your retirement can be dangerous because you'll run out of money. Similarly, if you're relying on the market delivering really good investment returns, you also need to be careful. What happens if the markets go down? Always better to rather be a little cautious up front with a living annuity. To really emphasize the risk of withdrawing too much, Let's consider if you withdrew the maximum, so 17.5%. You'll get 43,750 Rand per month from our 3 million Rand example. The next year, let's call that year two, you won't get as much income. Why? Because you're withdrawing a percentage that is much higher than what your investment is going to be able to generate as a return. I mean, it's not impossible, but highly unlikely that you'll be able to earn a return of 17.5% on this kind of investment. And as a result, your capital amount at the end of the year is less than what it was at the start of the year. So if you continue withdrawing 17.5% in year two, you now get a lower income amount because your capital is reduced. This is what people refer to as eating into your capital. Every year, your income will get less and less. If you're drawing 17.5%, that is going to happen at a rapid pace, and you'll very soon have nothing left. Let's rather consider a drawdown percentage that is more resilient over time. What if we only withdrew somewhere between 4 and 5%? Look, there are so many assumptions that we need to make to figure this out. We need to try guess what inflation will be in the future and what investment returns will be in the market. And we all know that it's really difficult to predict those things. So some people will say that this magic number is 4%. Others will say 5%. And 
and others will be somewhere near those two, but it's there or thereabout. Now, this four to five percent means that you're withdrawing a smaller amount than what you might hope for your investment to earn in the market each year. So, your capital will likely increase in value every year. The income you withdraw in the first year will obviously be less than if you were withdrawing 17.5%. But the following year, when you withdraw 4 to 5% again, you get more income. And you'll be able to give yourself an increase in income for many years because your capital amount is growing. Some of you might have heard about the 4% rule or the rule of 300. That's what this is basically. It's saying that if you can live off only withdrawing 4% from your retirement savings, you're probably going to be okay. If not, then you might want to consider some other options, which we'll discuss in this series. What makes these decisions difficult is that we don't exactly know when we're going to die. If we only have another five years, then there's no problem. But what if we have another 30 years? Another thing that we often forget is that certain expenses, especially medical expenses, increase quite significantly as we get older. Just look at how the cost of a Spur burger, some Rick coffee and a tin of condensed milk has gone up in price over time. You really want to set up your drawdown percentage in a way that you can give yourself an increase every year and get more income each year. The value of those assets sitting in your living annuity can vary a lot and your money could run out so you need to monitor it carefully or ensure that your financial advisor is doing that on your behalf. The nice thing about a living annuity though is that you have control. Although for some of you, I'm sure you're thinking that that's not such a nice thing. You need to monitor your drawdown percentage, reassess it each year, check the investment markets or get your financial advisor to report back to you. But for others, you might like that control. And then of course, often the biggest pull towards a living annuity is that the money remains in your ownership. When you die, your beneficiaries can inherit it. Although that will only happen if there actually is money left over. If you're withdrawing too much, specifically if you reach that point where you start eating into your capital, there isn't going to be much money to leave for your beneficiaries. The reality is that your children or whoever you're wanting to leave your money to will most likely have to support you financially. I know there was a lot of information coming at you in this video. Rewatch the video if you need to. With a living annuity, the most important thing is that you understand the implications of how much you're withdrawing each year.